President Trump's first Secretary of Defense, James Mattis, has a new book out in which he's critical of the president. There must be some serious bad blood between the two, right? Remember what Donald Trump said on 60 Minutes right before Mad Dog Mattis resigned? I think he's sort of a Democrat, if you want to know the truth. But General Mattis is a good guy. We get along very well. He may leave. I mean, at some point, everybody leaves. And man, what a title. Call sign chaos. Surely that's a shot at President Trump. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. But Mattis said the title had nothing to do with Trump. Well, I, I was always full of great suggestions for my troops. And uh, on one occasion when I was a colonel, I was down seeing my operations officer with yet another outstanding suggestion. And I saw chaos written on his whiteboard. And when I probed him uh, at some length, find out what it meant, he said, well, tongue in cheek, that's the colonel has another outstanding suggestion. <laughs> uh, so that became chaos and I adopted it as my call sign from my irreverent troops. But certainly his relationship with Trump was tense and dysfunctional, right? No, it wasn't a tense relationship. The uh, president's a forthright man and so am I. I would meet with him weekly. Uh, there was nothing going on that I wasn't open with him about. That's the way I deal with my boss anywhere I've ever been. And he was, as you know, he's the boss, right? He was elected by the American people. All right. So where's the part where he slams Trump? You said, I can't agree with this. I can't agree with the, the pull out of troops in Syria. Mm -hmm. And the report was that one of the things you said is uh, have your next secretary of defense be the one to lose to ISIS. Well, I, I maintain confidentiality, Brian, when I talk with the president. Uh, I would just tell you that but you don't I back got away called from that assessment, right? Well, I was uh, asked to serve, and I come from, I uh, was raised by the greatest generation. And you came out of retirement. I did. I was enjoying life. Uh, but when you're asked to serve, Republican or Democrat, don't get, start wringing your hands and asking what to do in this way. Just roll up your sleeves if you're prepared, go to work, and do your best. It's, it's very, very simple. So that's it? Policy differences? Where is the anti-Trump red meat? Well, I, I try not to talk, having parted ways with the administration over matters of policy. We have Secretary Pompeo, Secretary Esper, the president, who are trying to defend the country. And I don't, right. what I call the cheap seats, I don't want to talk from the cheap seats now and make their job more difficult when we have a million troops out right. around the world trying to keep this big experiment sure. we call America alive. That's it? All right, forget about Fox. How about MSNB Hee Haw? He doesn't stab directly at Trump, it's not his style, but you don't need to be an expert in reading between the lines to pick up on exactly what he's saying. For instance, in talking about leadership and a need for allies, he writes this, quote, a wise leader must deal with reality and state what he intends and what level of commitment he's willing to invest in achieving that end. He then has to trust that his subordinates know how to carry that out. Wise leadership requires collaboration, otherwise, it will lead to failure. That's it? What about PBS? Are you confident this is a president who can be trusted with the nuclear codes, the fateful uh, response? Yes. You want to expand on that, why you believe that? You know, the, uh, the, the responsibility that lies, and that's a very grave one, uh, I have not uh, heard anything that would indicate that, uh, that in private or in, in guarded conversations that uh, there was some, uh, there was some uh, irresponsibility there. Come on, PBS. Can we try a little harder? If you believe that this president or any president was not a fit commander in chief, would you say so? Yes. In other words, you think he's fit? No, I'm not saying that. Uh, I, I don't make political assessments uh, one way or the other. I come from the Defense Department. We protect this experiment in democracy. We don't make assessments of the people's choice to serve as the elected commander in chief. <laughs> oh, well. Now let's talk about another book. This one written by Obama's first Secretary of Defense, Robert Gates, sharply critical about Obama's style as commander in chief and about his approach to the Afghanistan war. It's one thing to tell the troops that you support them. It's another to work at making them believe that you believe as president their sacrifice is worth it, that the cause is just. 
that what they're doing was important for the country and that they must succeed. President Bush did that with the troops when I was secretary. I did not see President Obama do that. The president needed to acknowledge that the Afghanistan war could take years, but that he was confident we would ultimately be successful. End of quote. This is serious criticism. I mean, Gates was criticizing Obama's approach to Afghanistan because, said Gates, Obama didn't believe in the mission. If Obama didn't believe in the mission, how are the troops going to believe in the mission? Now, do you remember President George W. Bush's controversial surge in 2007 that turned around the Iraq war? So America will change our strategy to help the Iraqis carry out their campaign to put down sectarian violence and bring security to the people of Baghdad. This will require increasing American force levels. So I've committed more than 20,000 additional American troops to Iraq. Senator Barack Obama opposed it. I am not persuaded that 20,000 additional troops in Iraq uh, is gonna solve the sectarian violence there. In fact, I think it will do the reverse. Senator Hillary Clinton also opposed it. And I disapprove of the policy. I think it is a dead end. It continues the blank check. Now get this. Gates said in his book that both Hillary and Obama opposed the surge, not for strategic or military reasons. They both admitted to him that they opposed the surge for political reasons. Hillary told the president that her opposition to the 2007 surge in Iraq had been political because she was facing him in the Iowa primary. The president conceded vaguely that the opposition to the Iraq surge had been political. To hear the two of them making these admissions and in front of me was as surprising as it was dismaying." End of quote. This brings us to the Iran deal, clearly one of Obama's most important policy decisions. What did Secretary Gates think about the Iran deal? I think that the pursuit of the agreement is based on the president's hope that over a 10-year period with the sanctions being lifted, uh, that the Iranians will become a constructive stakeholder in the international community. That, <clears throat> that as their economy begins to grow again, that, that they will abandon their ideology, their theology, their revolutionary principles, uh, their meddling in various parts of the region. And frankly, I believe that's very unrealistic. Now let's put this in perspective. How serious was Gates' criticism of Barack Obama as commander in chief? Here's what the Washington Post's Bob Woodward said. One of the more serious charges that a defense secretary could make against a commander in chief. It is rare for a former cabinet member, let alone a defense secretary occupying a central position in the chain of command to publish such an antagonistic portrait of a sitting president, end of quote. So of these two books, which one by far was the more harshly critical of the commander in chief? the one written by Mattis about Trump, or the one written by Gates about Obama? Okay, rhetorical question. Here's another one. Which book are the media more hyperventilating over? Mattis' the book about Trump or Gates' book about Obama? Another rhetorical question. <laughs> Finally, people ask me, yo, Sage, how can I make money? Yo, Sage, what can I do to acquire nice things? Yo, Sage, is there some sort of secret sauce to making money? And the answer is, yes, there is. And I will divulge it to you right here and right now. Get a job. <laughs> I'm Larry Elder, and this has been the Larry Elder Show for Epic Times. I'll see you next time. <laughs>